Good, good. All right. So next, we move on to something where we have some, some elements. So here, in this example, the universal set includes the integers from 1 to 11. It gives you the subset A, which is the integers 3 to 6, and the subset B, which is the integers 2, 3, 5, 7, 9. Our first task is to draw a Venn diagram to represent A and, so intersection, with not B. Okay, before we can get to that, we should probably, I find the easiest to start with this intersection. Mm -hmm. Right, so we better do some labeling here. That's A, that's B, and 3 is in both. And 5. And 5 is in both. So if we put 3 and 5 in the middle, that allows us to have 4 and 6 just in A, but not in B. And in B, we need 2, 7, and 9, right? It's my attempt at a 7. Very good. Does that look good, Mr. Song? Looks great. Okay, so if it's not in A and it's not in B, it needs to go down outside. So which digits are outside? 1. Good. 6, 7, 8. 8. 8. 10, 11. 10 and 11. Okay. So, A, intersection with not B. Um, because it gets pretty tight in here, uh, let's see. A, intersection with not B. Can we remember it or should we, should we go for I think we can remember. We just again? did it a, a minute ago. Okay. So, it's A, but you want an intersection with not B. So, it's a little, uh, what does that look like? It's a, a moon. moon. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Looks like um, if if you or oh, Pac-Man, I'm not sure. Oh, yeah, but uh, if if we look at A and not B, and if you're unsure if that went too fast, go back to the previous slide and have have a look at how we got that. Now we have a nice follow through. Then find not A, and this is a little bit different than the shading because we're actually going to list the elements that are not in A. Mm -hmm. So. This is set A, so everything that's not in A, 1, 2, 7, 8, 10, and 11. 9? Maybe? Yeah. Excellent. Mm -hmm. Okay, what about the intersection A and B? Oh, that's easy. That's the overlapped 3 and 5. Three and five. Excellent. And the union of A and B, A or B? Mm -hmm. There you start listing everything in the two subsets A and B. So two, three, four, five, six, seven, nine. Excellent. Mike. Now, Mr. Kerbis, what is your secret on making the nice, pretty, <laughs> curly bracket there? Just got to say, practice, practice. Practice, practice makes right. perfect. <laughs> you weren't going to let the students uh, get away with that. <laughs> that was uh, me writing and not you. Yeah. <laughs> Good. So um, next, some vocabulary. We have uh, two sets, A and B, are disjoint or mutually exclusive if they have no members in common. So the example I used in, in day one when I talked to, to my class is gender. Male, female, you won't mm -hmm. be one or the other. Student, teacher, those are disjoint sets. You won't be one, you, you will have no members in common. Right. What kind of things came up in your lessons? Um, evens and odds. Evens and odds, mm -hmm. excellent, excellent. So in a Venn diagram, if you have things that are mutually exclusive, it doesn't just have to be two, but there can definitely be no overlap. The most common is just to draw two circles, but disjoint, mutually exclusive, I believe in the English term is synonyms. Would they be synonyms? I don't know. I think so. Yeah. All right. Okay. So generate two situations which are mutually exclusive. Um, we actually did a few before you, but I would like you guys to generate a second one on your own and we'll check that in class. So we had some examples here, male, Female. Oh, my handwriting is brilliant. And um, you said evens and odds came up in your class? Oh, also um, Bayern fans and 
Barcelona fans? Uh, nobody can cheer for both. Right, because they're about to compete against each other in the Champions League. Okay, so Bayern and Barca fans. We don't have a lot of Barca fans here, do we? Mm -hmm. Nope. A couple of Bayern fans, though. A few, I think. <laughs> oh, man, I got Giant Eraser going on here. Let it undo. Excellent. So, you going to watch that game? Oh, absolutely. Should be good, eh? Mm -hmm. So, teacher and student. So, there's four from us. See if you can come up with some more and interpret my handwriting. Okay, next. We have, this is our final example for the day two podcast. And uh, you, we have a survey of 50 customers at a video store. We found that 29 enjoyed adventure, 22 enjoyed comedy, 18 enjoyed horror. Of these, eight liked both adventure and comedy, 10 liked both comedy and horror, five liked both adventure and horror, and four liked all three types of videos. So I'm gonna pass this over to Mr. Song and let him uh, have a starting point. And what's the easiest part to start and how many circles do we need for this one? Well, there are three categories, the genres of videos. So I'm gonna make a universal set, a big box here. Oh no. That's good. There, okay. And three circles, one for adventure. One for comedy, and third for horror. There. And Mr. Kerbis mentioned earlier when we have overlaps and he likes to start in the middle, and I do the same. So I would work backwards and start from uh, four liked all three types. So I'm going to put a four in the middle there. Okay, and you just work outwards, backwards. So let's look at uh, this statement here. Five liked both adventure and horror movies. So adventure and horror would be, oh, uh, let me use the blue here, different color, would be here. Right. So um, that uh, overlap should have five people in it, and there's already four, so there's one in this empty spot. Good, so one person likes adventure and horror, but not comedy. Right, um, and 10 liked both comedy and horror, so that should be here, and four of them are, are, are here liking all three, so the rest, I have six people liking comedy and horror, but not adventure. Mm -hmm. Good. Okay, and eight liked both adventure and comedy, and it's the same here, adventure and comedy, and four in the middle already, so I have four more liking adventure and comedy, but not horror. Mm -hmm. Cool. And we can just keep working, working this uh, backwards up now to 18 enjoyed horror films. Mm -hmm. So, 18, so this subset here for horror should have 18 people total in it, and there's six, four, and one. That's 11, so I should have seven in horror but nothing else good and 22 enjoyed comedy so that's over here and i have six and four and four that's 14 and 24 22 minus 14 is eight, eight. so eight liked comedy but none of the other genres mm -hmm. and we have finally 29 enjoyed adventure videos. So adventure videos here. So I have four, four, and one, which is nine. And you have 20. Excellent. So they, they forgot your, your favorite genre here, uh, romantic comedies. Ah, oh, that's right. So maybe there's some people outside which are not, uh, not included in these 50. Right, let's check. So we add everything up, right. 20 and four, 24, 28, 29. If we take all the adventure, 29, and then we add on that 7, that gives us 36 
plus that 6, 42, plus 8 is 50. Ah, oh. there's, there's no space for anybody who doesn't like those three genres. You're out of luck I, there, Mr. Song. I wasn't one of the 50 customers at the video store. Uh, okay. I, <laughs> so. I usually try, try to hide it and find those online. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so that's the video for day two. And uh, see you in class with your examples of disjoint groups. All right. Bye.